Hey, welcome back to part three. We're going to begin today by doing some epoxy work, trying to fill some of these voids. And part three, I think I'll also include all the work to cut down these parts and pieces to fit. I'll talk a little bit about the joinery I want to use. And that should be it for this round. So let's get started. I need to get this cleaned out before I can lay down some epoxy and uh, this is a little bit like going to the dentist where I'm just looking for the real soft stuff because if I epoxy in here yeah I might be able to kind of glue this stuff together but this is this is kind of cruddy stuff so I want to get this out of here this happens to be the underside of the table and I'm starting on this side so that if I make any mistakes I can kind of learn from what I'm doing here so let's pick this stuff out of here. So I've got this cavity all cleaned out now. It looks like we got good solid wood here. You notice right down here you can actually see right through the table. So what I've done is put some tape underneath here, some packing tape, so that when I fill this with epoxy it doesn't leak out. I'm going to be cutting these uh, close to the final size that I need with the table saw. I'll leave a little bit so that I can finish this with the planer and get a good surface. Ran into one little dilemma here when I was planing this board out, but this whole knot came out, so we've got a pretty good hole. And we're using clear epoxy, and I didn't want any color mixed into it. And I don't like this hole because it's going to show right through to the inner um, structure of the table. So what I'll do with this is take some, some of my thin cutoffs and I'll put those on the underside, then I can fill this with epoxy, it won't show through. And these pieces will be kind of hidden behind the back of the table anyway. So let's give that a shot.
All right, I've got quite a bit of epoxy down in a whole bunch of different spots. This is the one I'm really watching close. That's that knot. And then I flip the table over and I hit the top side. I laid down a bunch, just a thin layer over this whole thing because it was rough and this should fill in all the voids and I should be able to just sand it off both of those sides where I had a lot of trim or a lot, a lot of um, grain. So you can see the grain in there now with this on. That's, that's really cool. So now I just baby this at this stuff. Um, I'll use my torch here to take bubbles out. There's one for example. And so these will just keep bubbling up as the air comes up out of this. And I'll just keep after it. This one is really nice and cool. But we still see a few bubbles around these edges. So we'll just keep after that for probably the next hour or so till it settles in. I think I'm done with epoxy on the tabletop. Just plopped it in anywhere there was a knot or a small hole or a crack. This area just had a just kind of a lot of rough finish. So I just laid that on thick with a credit card. And over here the same. So I'm going to sand this. I'll just make a first pass with 60 grit just to get the bulk of this off of here and get it flat. And that'll tell me if I've covered any everything or if I still need to put a few dots here and there. We'll come back after I'm done with the sanding. All right, there it is. Got the epoxy off. Found a few spots that need some work. For the most part, it turned out nice. But there were a few low spots. We had one there. Had a couple little holes here. A few other cracks in some areas where I think I'll just put a real light coat of epoxy on there. And then I had this one spot here where it's actually kind of sticky, so I don't know if I didn't put enough hardener in that, but I'll leave that overnight and see what it looks like, and then I'll fill that one in as well. And then we'll hit it with another round of sanding. So I'm gonna put a rabbit into the top rails here to receive the legs so they can lock in nice and snug. Okay, I've got these slots all cut out now in the base. This is how the legs and the frame fit together. Just like that. I'll put fasteners in here and that should give us plenty of strength. Alright, I couldn't resist doing a quick preview. So I've just clamped the legs on there for now and set the table on top of the base. I kind of like the dimensions, it looks pretty good. Of course, it'll have an apron all the way around. These legs will have cross bracing and slats, and then there will be a stretcher between the two legs to kind of tighten all that up. But I'm pretty happy with this so far. There's still a long ways to go, but everything is fitting up nice. Okay, I'm starting on the cross bracing for the legs. So this is going to go something like this. In order to attach these two pieces, I'm going to use a mortise and tenon. 
So we'll cut a mortise right here into this leg. We'll cut a tenon on this cross piece that fits right into that mortise. So I'm going to use a mortiser to do that and I'll show you how I set it all up. Okay, it's not that tough to set up, but the first thing I want to do is make sure that my hold down is the right height. And since this piece is actually lower than that fence, I'm going to have to put a spacer in here. So I'll just put another piece of wood there. I'll bring this in. And we'll drop that hold down right on top and lock it in. So that means when, when the bit comes up out of there, um, it's not going to lift this up off the base. All right, the next thing I want to do is get my um, bit in there. And the bit, this is a chisel, basically, this is a drill that drills square holes. So we've got is a chisel and a bit that rides right up inside of that. So let's install that. So we're going to start by locking the bit into the chuck. All right, we've got that. Now I want to square this chisel up to this fence. And the easy way to do that put my work piece in here and I'm going to make sure this back edge is flush or even with my work piece. There, that's where I want it. Then I'll just lock that chisel in with a set screw. Alright, we're good there. Alright, the next thing I want to do is get this centered in the center of the leg where I want that hole to go. I don't know if you can see this very well. But I've marked a couple of spots right there and right there. That's the outer edges of where this chisel needs to run. So let's bring this table out. There's a fence. Okay, we're pretty close. That's where I want it, right there. And I can lock this in. Okay, the last thing I want to do is set the depth on this. And I want my tenon to go an inch into the leg. So I'm going to slide this back. I've marked an inch right here. There is a stop rod here. Let me back up a little so you can see this. The stop rod needs to be adjusted. So I'm going to push that down. I'm going to bring this right to my one inch mark. Right there's where I want it. And I'll tighten up my stop. There. I'd like to get these things identical. So I'm going to First, line this one up with my mark. I've set marks in here for where I want this mortise to start and end. 
I'm going to set a stop block here. And what I'll do is cut each one of these legs. I'm only going to put one mortise in to begin with. Um, I'll do one cut on each one of these legs. Then I'll come back and I'll change the stop to the other end. Um, and I'll, again, I'll mark that. I'll cut all of those and then I'll cut out the middle. So let's start. Right now we'll just finish filling out the middle of this. And there it is. There's our mortise. I need to clean this up a little bit with a chisel, but it looks pretty good. All right, now I'm going to cut my tenons in the cross pieces. Again, I've measured out what I want and set a stop on this. I've cut these a little bit big and I'm going to tune them with a uh, chisel. Now we're going to trim the top and bottom shoulders off of this tenon. Alright, let's dry fit these just to show you how this all goes together. I'll take the nicest pieces on and put them on the bottom only because you'll see less of the ones on the top. Alright, that's not a bad fit up for starters. Now I gotta take it all apart and I gotta start working on these slats, which are little tiny half inch slats. It'll be a half inch apart, so there'll be a lot of those to do. Alright, so we've refined our design a bit. We decided to make these slats 
uh, much thinner and so there's more of those in there. They're, these are half inch square and they're spaced half inch apart. I made a little mock up here just so I could get an idea of how I wanted to attach these slats. So what I'm going to do is put a half inch square mortise into both the, the bottom and top rail for the legs and then I'm going to cut these pieces to exactly half inch square and drop them right in like that. So these aren't really spaced. There we go. I guess these three would be spaced about how we would be doing that. So I thought about how to get the spacing perfect on these and nice and even and it came up with a system here where I'm going to actually use these little samples for spacing. So let's get started on this. Alright, now I'll put an anchor in this one. I'll put this one right next to it since it's a half inch. Bring it right up till it's touching and cut my next one. Alright, so there they are, cut out, evenly spaced. Now I just need to make the slats that fit in here. Alright, I've got the table upside down. I have one more job for my mortiser before I can put it away. I need to put the stretcher in. This table's upside down right now, but between these bottom rails, I'm running a stretcher for support. So that stretcher will come in something like this. And again, I'm going to mortise and tenon that in. So in order to do that, I need to get a good accurate measurement. And I've made the mistake before of measuring from here to here. And that doesn't work. You actually have to step in and measure from here over to here. And what I've got is 39 and 3 a strong. So I will cut my tenons into this and make sure the shoulder is between shoulder to shoulder is 39 and 3 a And then I just have to make sure that I get my mortises in here centered. All right, stretcher is in one step closer. Looks pretty nice. I guess the next thing I should be doing is getting started on these spindles. I'm going to start working on these spindles here. So I'm going to need 16 per side. And they're only half inch by half inch. I need uh, them to be about 14 inches long. And here's the wood that I've pulled out of my scrap list. This is the leftovers from the other walnut that I used for the rest of the table. So I need to get 32 half inch by half inch, 14 inch long spindles out of this. I think there's enough here to do the job. I just need to find the best of it, the straightest of it, and start working. Here's all of the slats or the spindles. Again, half inch square. These are a little bit oversized. I'm going to run them through the planer 
to fine tune them so they fit inside all those mortises. But this is 16, so you can kind of see how they lay out. So I finished up those spindles. Get the legs attached. I cut the apron out, mitered it. That's in good shape. I like the miters. I think they're going to look real good. And I threw the top back on just to get a look at it. I think this is good. Now before I can do anything else, I'm going to have to do a job that I've been putting off for a long time, and that's to cut this top down to the final dimension and then cut it right down the middle. That's where it'll open and the leaf will go in and then I have to take this leaf and do the same thing. Cut that to dimension and in this case I need to cut it across the middle because that's where it'll fold and then I also need to cut some grooves in for the hardware that'll go on there, um, the hinges. Time has come to do the scary cuts on this butterfly leaf. So I've got the old one here as a template and you can see I've got to cut these slots out and those slots are there to accommodate part of that hinge that drops down in there. So I've gone through and marked on both of these boards exactly where those slots need to go. Next I'll cut those. I'm using my radial arm saw for this job. I've got a dado blade in there that'll give me a 3 8 inch wide cut. And I need to bring this blade out just so that the middle of that blade is right at the edge of the wood here. I don't want to go any further. And with a radial arm saw, the, the blade rotates in this direction and it tends to want to pull itself out. So in order to prevent that, I put a vise in here and created a stop. It stops me right where I want to be. So let's cut some walnut. Okay, we have our slots to receive these hinges. So they'll go in something, let's see here, something like this. Now the other thing I have to do is I have to recess these hinges just a bit. And the reason for that is these hinges are designed for a certain thickness of table. The old one was just over three quarter, kind of right in that neighborhood. And the hinges could go surface mount on those, no problem. This table I'm working on right now though is just over, probably a 32nd over a full inch. And so in order for these hinges to work properly, I'm going to have to recess these. So I'm ready to recess these hinges. In position one, it's going to go right here. I made a frame for my router to follow so that I can recess only this portion. And I'm going to be doing it in two passes because it needs to be down a little ways, so I'll take one shallow pass and then I'll go to full depth. I'll be using a little tiny router. It's actually a router attachment that goes on my uh, Black & Decker Matrix drill 
and this thing does a lot of different things probably none of it very well I normally just use this as an impact driver but this is really nice because it's it's a small enough router it should be really easy to get in and in and out of this Okay, I just finished routing it to the final depth. And that sits in there real nice. That's exactly how I wanted it. So two more of those. All right, that part's done. So I've got all of these recessed in here, and these hinges are kind of special because they basically work backwards. Normally you would think a hinge would allow you to open it this way, but in this case, this hinge allows it to close this way. And they just reach, they reach all the way around. So that's it. I'm going to stop here and next time around this will be going into the table. That means I have to cut. All right, we'll do it this way. That means I have to cut the table down the middle, get this fit in, and then on And then where these tables come together, we need pins. And so I've got some pins that go in here that get sunk in, some sockets that go in the other side, and that's how they align. So stay tuned. I think on the next round, I'm going to finish this thing up and get it off to Anna so she can do her linseed oil finish.